Okay, we're back, and this time we're looking at momentum. Uh, in fact, we're going to ask and try to answer the, the basic question about momentum is why and how is it conserved uh, when you have collisions? And the, the key points here, there's a couple of them. Uh, one of which is when we talk about conservation of momentum or conservation of anything for that matter, we're really talking about a system. The total amount of the quantity doesn't change um, yeah, over time for that particular system. So here we're talking about conservation momentum. Uh, obviously, in individually, if you're playing billiards, if two pool balls are moving in and they collide with each other, uh, they're going to bounce off each other, they change speeds, they change directions. So individually, momentum changes all the time for objects. Uh, that's why we have this idea of impulse. And keep in mind, impulse is really just delta p. And fundamentally, um, the, the change of momentum through Newton's second law is related to the force that's causing the momentum to change and the time that that force is acting. So just generically, we'll write it as your impulse is force times delta t. Now, in order for conservation momentum to work, we have to have no external forces. So, if, if you recall uh, Newton's second law, F equals ma, and we'll just write that as net force, uh, we can rewrite that if, if knowing that acceleration is dv dt, the rate of change of velocity, we've rewritten this as dt over dt. Okay, so impulse is your numerator there. That's your change of momentum divided by time. So, <coughs> basically, if, if your net force acting on the system turns out to be zero, we have a derivative being equal to zero. Well, the derivative of constants are equal to zero. Okay, so that's what this means, is if, if there's no net force, if there's no external forces acting on the system, momentum is going to be conserved. Then we have Newton's third law. For every action, there's an equal and opposite reaction. <coughs> that's actually one of the keys to understanding why momentum is conserved. So let's take a look at the math behind this. And it's really, it's, it's not terribly difficult to understand. But it, obvi obviously, momentum conservation is one of the big things in physics. Um, certainly important when we do collisions of any kind, or explosions for that matter. So it's important to understand why this happens. So in our before picture, the blue ball and red ball move towards each other, each have initial momentum. And what we're really interested in is, is the during picture, when the two balls are actually touching each other and interacting with each other. Uh, they're going to the red ball hits the blue ball and produces a force on the blue ball. We call that force one. And at the same time, the blue ball hits the red ball and produces a force on the red ball. That's what we're calling F2. These are internal forces. Those are internal to the system during the collision. They're not external forces. And because of the third law of motion, we know that those forces have to be equal and opposite in, in terms of direction. So what we can do is we can assume that for the blue ball, its momentum is going to change. And that impulse is going to have a magnitude of whatever force that blue ball feels, which we're calling F1, multiplied by some time. Now what we're talking about here is delta T it's the time of the collision. It's how long the two balls are touching each other. Okay. And simultaneously for the red ball, uh, it too, its momentum is going to change. And that's going to be equal to whatever force it feels, F2, multiplied by the time of the collision. So that delta T is going to be the same for both balls. Well, uh, now for the system, we can ask the question, well, what's, what's the total impulse? 
Well, that's going to be a vector sum of the, the impulses of the balls that are interacting with each other. And should be more precise here. These are all vectors that we're talking about. So that means that uh, it's going to be the sum of the, the vector sum of the impulses. Okay. And perhaps you can see where we're going with this. When we substitute in these expressions, and then apply the third law, where F2, for example, is the opposite of F1. We can substitute that in. And all of a sudden you can see how the total impulse, the total change in momentum for the system will always turn out to be zero when you do this vector sum. As long as the net force, as long as the external forces are zero. This is going to be true. And if your impulse is zero, that means there's no change in momentum. That means the total momentum for your system is conserved. So, again, um, key ideas. Uh, we're talking about impulses for the individual objects, but because of the third law of motion, those impulses will be equal and opposite each other, and therefore for the system, momentum is conserved during that collision. So I hope this helps, and uh, until next time, we'll see you later.